Yeah, well, as we've seen, Lexus, you'd expect a Lexus to be good, but that is rubbish. Hyundai, by contrast, your expectations are a bit lower, but actually that coupe is a really good car. And here's an even better example. Look at that. It's a Vauxhall. Bad. No, you see, it's not. It's a good car. 2.2-litre supercharged engine, 240 brake horsepower, rear-wheel drive, and look at it, chrome vents on the bonnet, mm. gorgeous lines. It is a beautiful-looking thing. Look at that interior. Fantastic. That's fantastic. OK, I'll give you that. That's a good Vauxhall. It but, is. But look what we've got in the hangar. This is the R Coupe. It's the only one in the world, and honestly, have you ever seen such a beautiful car? Neither have I, but then, strictly speaking, it isn't actually a car. It's a concept. It's a one-off. It's a flight of fancy. Jaguar built it to show the world where they're going. But we start tonight on our track. In the studio, we've got the new Citroen C4. And when you look inside, you discover that the steering wheel turns, but the middle stays where it is. Look at that! That's absolutely <laughs> remarkable. What's more, we think this is a really, really good-looking car. And because it's a Citroen, it's going to be good value. Right, enough of this pop nonsense. Have a look at this. What we have here is the new Jaguar XK. How about that? Now, Jaguar say that this is only a concept car, but don't be fooled by that because we've seen the real thing and we happen to know that this is exactly the same. Now, this has been designed by the same man who did the Aston Martin DB9 uh, using a piece of tracing paper. <laughs> what we do know about it is that it's going to be on sale early next year with prices from about £50,000. There'll be the 4.2 V8 engine that we're already familiar with in supercharged form as well. And we have heard from one of our spies that there's going to be a very special edition with up to 500 horsepower. So, ordered a Porsche 911? Kept the receipt, did you? <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? That Jag. It's, an, it's a DB9 for 50 grand off. This is Britain's entry. It's the Aston Martin DBR9. Now, you can buy one for half a million quid, uh, although you can't use it on the road because it's a racing car. Look. Now, look at the problem here. You see this spoiler? Cut a toad clean in half, that thing. would. <laughs> What we've got in essence is a DB9 chassis, DB9 body, although it's made of carbon fibre, DB9 engine, tuned to develop 600 brake horsepower. And it only weighs 1.1 tonnes. Now, you see those little carbon fibre holes down there? They things things? When it races in America, there are going to be lights in those, OK? And when one's on, it's winning. Two on, second. Three on, it's third. Now, what I want is one on all the time. Yeah. I want it to wipe the smile off Ferrari's face. Yes. 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 In fact, that should be this car's mission. That's all it's for from now on. Definitely. Right, now... Then we begin with this. It's a new Aston Martin. It's called the Repeat. You can think of it as a DB9 with two extra doors. And that means there is room back here for two extra fully grown adults to enjoy the 470 horsepower V12 motoring experience. And they can enjoy exquisite details such as these magnetically located grab handles. Look, won't flap around when you're driving along. All this is yours for £140,000. Now, that is quite a bit more expensive than Porsche's four door, the Panamera, but. There are two very good reasons why you should choose the Aston Martin. Firstly, and unlike the Porsche, it does look rather magnificent. And secondly, most importantly, this is quintessentially British. Despite the fact that it's made in Austria. <laughs> which I think is in Germany. <laughs> right, now, Rolls-Royce have said that they will never build a convertible version of their Phantom. So here it is. This is a unique one-off car. It's called the 100 EX, and it is magnificent. Just look at the size of it. Rolls-Royce actually say it's supposed to look like a sort of posh motorboat in motion, and it kind of does. And it's even got teak decking here at the back. A man from the, the Farterland delivered the car to us in a BMW T-shirt, and he was very strict. He said to me, Das Bonnet is nicht für Fingerpoken, because it's made of a, a single piece of machined aluminium. This, though, is solid silver. 
How about that? But what I really like, what I really like about this is the normal Nancy Boy V12 that you get in these things has been replaced by a V16 engine, and it's there purely for smoothness. I like that. I like this. Rolls-Royce have said they will never build this car. So expect to see it on sale soon for about £300,000. <laughs> This one is called the RD6. It's made almost entirely of aluminium. It's very light and it's powered, remarkably enough, by a turbocharged V6 diesel engine. But the bit I really like is the inside. Have a look at this. Now, have a look at that black leather and all those shiny bits and those red lights down in the footwell. Now, clearly, a Jaguar designer got completely lashed in a vodka bar and thought, oh, I'll make it look like this then. So, obviously, there'll be a bouncer on the door telling you you can't come in because you've got trainers on. It's a gorgeous-looking thing. I think it it's is. fab. But here's the thing I don't get about Jaguar concept cars. Two years ago, about then, they showed us the XK180. And there it is. That was to show us what Jaguars of the future will look like. But then, last year, they did the R Coupe to show us what Jaguars of the future will look like. And now they're back again with this to show us what Jaguars of the future will look like. Now look, Jaguar, you have made your point. Just make the car. <laughs> now, though, Porsche and Aston Martin are thinking along similar lines to that. And then there is this. This is the Lamborghini Estacay. Yeah, now this isn't actually a real car yet, it's just a model. And Lamborghinis say if they do make it, it could have a diesel. I don't think so. <laughs> or a hybrid engine. I don't think so. Or maybe the V10 from the new Gallardo. That's more likely, I think. Whatever engine it is, though, it will go here at the front. And that means there is room for a proper boot at the back. And more importantly, it means there is room in here for four people. And it's not one of those supercars with seats in the front and token seats in the back. It really is massive. Have a look at the legroom back there. Do you know what I love about this most of all? is they haven't fallen into the same trap that Porsche fell into with the, uh, the off-road, the KN. Because that, OK, they've kind of got a supercar 911 nose on the front and then an ordinary car on the back. So you look and you go, wow, it's Kate Moss. And you look down the side, oh, no, it's got John Prescott's arse. <laughs> this, from every angle, it just gets better looking. It is magnificent. It's just staggering. Please make it. <sighs> uh, anyway. Now, I'm afraid we've had another complaint from a viewer that we don't feature enough sensible, down-to-earth cars on the show. So, this week, we've got one in the studio. It has excellent luggage capacity, and it does 33 miles to the gallon. Yep, and here it is! Yeah! <laughs> it's the Caparo T1, and it's the work of two engineers who used to design Formula One cars, the McLaren. And I just love some of the details, things like this rear light with this trail of LEDs down there. It really is absolutely fabulous. And look at this. These wing mirrors are mirrors on the wings. And then there's the engine. It's a 2.4-litre supercharged V8. And it's not cobbled together by gluing two old motorbike engines. It's actually bespoke for this car. It's powerful, 480 brake horsepower. And because the whole thing is so light, it weighs, what, less than half a Ford Fiesta. Yep. It's fast. Not to 60, two and a half seconds. And it'll do 200 miles an hour. I think what really impresses me, though, is that it's so reasonably priced. This is £190,000. <laughs> and the thing is, you laugh at that, but a Pagani Zonda is what? £100,000 more? Yeah. And this, Bargain. this really will do 33 miles to the gallon, honestly. Although we did make up the bit about the luggage space, that's <laughs> OK. But now there is a new car from Peugeot. We have it here in the studio. It's called the Onyx. It looks absolutely fantastic, and you will notice that some of the bodywork is made from copper, just like the boiler tubes on a Gresley A4 Streamliner Pacific Lotus. Yes, James, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's actually untreated copper, so over time it will turn green, unless a scrap metal merchant removes it in the middle of the night. <laughs> Inside, they've continued the theme of using unusual materials. So the dashboard here, that's made out of recycled newspaper. I'm guessing they'll have used the Guardian for everything on the left and the Telegraph for everything <laughs> on the right. Actually, the newspaper's good because it means there's no need to Bluetooth your phone to it. The dashboard will already have listened to your messages from it. <laughs> the engine is a 680 horsepower V8 turbo diesel hybrid. And that means the top speed in the outside lane of 40. <laughs> anyway, this is the future, perhaps, 
but now we must return to the present because but we do have a bit of a treat in store because look what we've got here it's the new mg sv and this is the new car from mg rover now that bmw have left them alone yippee <laughs> Um, of course, MGs in the past have always been a bit Johnny Go like they are, a bit delicate in the Dunlops. <laughs> this is different. If Oliver Reed and Russell Crowe made mad man love <laughs> on the set of Gladiator in an angry brawl, this would be the result. <laughs> this is the spawn of something momentous. It's even got somewhere to rest your helmet. <laughs> no, no, honestly, it's got helmet holders in the back. Would you like to hear it? Oh, yeah. Yes? The sound of V8 thunder. We all like a spot of that for Sunday evening. So, here we go. Go to DEFCON 3, engage, and fire. Now, um, this will be going on sale next year, priced at around £60,000 or more if you want the 1,000 horsepower nitrous kit. Oh, but you do, don't you? Yeah. You just do. Very, very nice. To prove it, we've got the latest French luxury car right here in the studio. This is the new Citroen C6. Now, this is going to be on sale here from the beginning of next year. Prices starting from around £30,000. And there's a choice of engines, a 2.7-litre diesel or a nice three-litre V6 petrol. Now, there is a tradition that big luxury French cars are always loaded with clever technology. This is no exception. It's got the latest generation of their computer-controlled hydropneumatic suspension. Inside, it's got diffused air conditioning, whatever that is, uh, and a head-up display. All very clever stuff. But most importantly, well, just look at it. I mean, mon dieu. I mean, zoot, allor, and sac a bleu. It is actually, seriously, this is a fantastic looking car. It's contemporary, it's really classy. Look at this curve in the window, that's so lovely. I have to say, the French really are very, very good at this sort of thing. They say no to sporty firm suspension and extreme performance, and instead they give us this more sort of considered philosophical approach to luxury. I really, really approve of that car. Watch it flop. <laughs> so we've had it shipped over from France and it's here. Now it's got two doors, one on each side, which isn't particularly revolutionary, obviously, but watch this. Hey, hey I love that. It's good, isn't it? Now, sliding doors, very convenient in car parks, very entertaining for small children, but the thing I like is that they make the noise of the, um, the Star Trek doors on the bridge. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Make the noise made by the Star Trek bridge well, door. It, it goes sort of... Mm. No, they don't. Try again. Well, it, all right, it's sort of... Psh. No, no, no. Anyone? Have a go. Psh. No. Psh. No, it isn't that at all. None of you got it. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> That's very good. The other thing about these doors is I wonder if they're available on the Ford GT. Just a thought. Um, <laughs> The best bit about this car, though, for me, is the interior, because, just put that down, when you're bored with it, OK, all the bits come off like that, and then you pop down to the Peugeot dealership, buy new coloured ones like that, and you can do the same with these kind of mats here and the seat upholstery and the door linings, and basically you've got a whole new car. Now, if you look at the back of it, the badge seems to say 1007, but actually we can't call it that, apparently. All the James Bond people have got onto Peugeot and said, no because they own 007. Yeah. We have to call it the 1007. Which isn't a particularly snappy name, but I do think this is a great little car. I Terrific. really do. When's it on sale? Uh, next May, £10,000. Very good. OK, we've got to move on now. OK, it's over there. If you look, it is a Vauxhall Astra VXR. Here it comes. <laughs> Moving towards us now. And uh, if you just watch carefully, you'll note that uh, it has now taken off. <laughs> It is flying. It's floating. No, it's not floating, James. It's flying. And there were no wires either. Before you say that, it has no wire suspending it. There is a man controlling that That's with a radio control so thing. Amazing. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this in your whole life? 
That is a ton of Vauxhall flying round the studio over people's heads. I will explain to you how it works, OK? It's basically, it weighs 10 pounds, which is about the same as my Sunday joint. And it's full of helium and it's got three little fans on it that make it stare and move about. That is incredible. Is it expensive? Yes. <laughs> it costs five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> It is 60,000 quid. <laughs> really? 60,000 quid and worth every penny. Ladies and gentlemen, That's a flying fossil. I will concede you have the best radio controlled car. That is, that is stunning, absolutely, isn't it? That is incredible. Stunning. Now, here's another new Ford. It's called the Vsauce. And look at this shape. Very cutting edge. And then the interior. Wow, and those dials, they're all spangly, clever, up-to-the-minute computer stuff. And there's no mirrors. Look, cameras instead. Ah, yeah. It's a very modern car, no doubt. But look a bit more closely. And look, there's these grills on the flank, and then the shape of this window. Now, you can't fool me. If Ford ever actually make this car for real, this is the new Capri. No doubt about it. Tell you what, though, you know in the olden days when people actually had Capris? They always had the bonnet up on a Saturday, tinkering around with the engine. Fettling. Exactly. Well, nowadays, people always fiddle around with computers. Yeah. So what this has got, which is amazing, well, if they ever get around to putting a bonnet in it, which they haven't at the moment, it'll have a... Plug. A plug, plug. Port, port thing. You put your laptop in it, and you'll be able to adjust, like, the rev limiter and the suspension settings and everything. But it goes further than that. It's very clever, because once you've got your laptop plugged in, you can then uh, log on to the internet, and you can actually download specifications and settings direct from Ford, and better than that even, you can then exchange data with your mates and their Vsauce. So if you got one, I could set the rev limit at like 1500 RPM. Have the headlamps flash every time we went above 10. <laughs> Not quite what they meant there, really. Or don't. even better, if you get stuck behind one on the road, what you could do is dial up its computer from your laptop, Bluetooth, mobile phone, speed him up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 50, and that's... then just apply one of the rear brakes. Yeah, that's just stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. Let's do the news. Right, the new Audi A6. We've actually got one here in the studio, just out. It's marginally bigger than the last one, five inches longer and about two inches wider. Prices start at £24,500, rising to about £43,000. Yes, and, and the power. The power is, well, this is the most powerful one here. 4.2 litre V8. 330 brake horsepower. What a bunch I know. of fairies. How did it get here? I can't pathetic. believe it. How did it get here with such a miserable amount of horsepower? What if there'd been a hill? Exactly. <laughs> That's a Mind French you. power output. It is pitiful. However, they've thought of everything else but the power. The list must have been pretty long because they've actually got to the point where, on this car, I kid you not, you can change the pitch of the reversing warning beep. Um, oh, now. Now, we have a very, very interesting new car in the studio this week. It's over here. Have a look at this. This is the new Mercedes CLS. Now, it's available with either a 3.5-litre V6 or a 5-litre V8 engine. Goes on sale next year. We expect prices will start from about £45,000. But, and here's the really interesting thing, it comes with an automatic gearbox that has seven forward speeds. And for reasons we just can't quite fathom, two reverse speeds. Yes, that's very interesting, Hammond. But this is more interesting, I think. It's the styling of the thing. Have a look. It's been made to look like a very svelte coupe. But it is actually a four-door. And more to the point, the doors are pillarless. How cool is that? For some reason, that's just, I don't know, fantastic. I think if we were doing the cool wall this week, we could have our first cool Mercedes. Quite possibly. OK. Right, on to some really important stuff. This is the first chance you've had to see the new Aston Martin DB9. It's a replacement for the DB7, and no, I don't know what happened to the DB8 either. But what I can tell you is that it's got the same engine as the DB7, V12, 6 litre, 450 brake horsepower. But apart from that, everything is new. It's got a new type of very light, very stiff chassis, and inside, well, you get a lot more space than you did in the old DB7. And they've gone for a kind of Range Rover feel, really. There's lots of wood, lots of leather, but it's very, very modern. Gearboxes, you can either have a proper manual or 
No gearbox at all by the looks of things. I think it's an automatic. Uh, the only thing I would say in there, not quite as many Ford switches as I would have liked. Hey. Yeah, what? <laughs> Needs an air of quality. Um, it's going on sale early next year, priced at £104,000. Now that's about £35,000 more than the V8 one we had in the series. Yep, it's a bit bigger. Earlier on, it's bigger than the V8, which is coming out in 2005. It's got two more seats than that. But you know, all of these really are mere details compared mm. to the looks of it. It's not as radical as my Lagonda, is it? But... Ooh. It is gorgeous, isn't it? You would agree. It's absolutely stunning. I said at the top of the show that really in 1966 we were at our peak for designing cars, but this shows that Aston Martin... A beacon. They're still holding the torch for car design. Fantastic. Sadly, we can't drive it because it's pre-production. But... Because the British have moved in with a new McLaren. Yes, it's called the MP4-2. 12C. We've got it here in the studio, and this is the first time, in fact, we've been able to have a proper look at it. Now, it has McLaren's own engine. It's a 3.8-litre twin-turbo V8. It also has very, very sophisticated computer-controlled suspension, and, most interestingly, it was tested here at the Top Gear test track. Yeah, we really should stress that we had nothing to do with the testing or development of it at all. <laughs> no, nothing whatsoever. But the thing that bothers me, Hammond, is I've driven the 458 a lot as you know, and I love it, and I cannot see how this can be better. Yes, yes, I know what you mean, but what if it is? And there are a few pointers. For one thing, it's going to be cheaper than the 458. You can't get in. I can. It's also going to be more powerful, 592 brake horsepower, which is about 30 or so more. These are good signs. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as well, I like it in here because they've made the steering wheel the steering wheel. They've, you know, they haven't fallen into that trap of putting buttons all over it to make it feel like Formula One. They don't make you choose on your instrument panel between a speedometer and a sat-nav like Ferrari do, all that stuff they put here, and your music, on a sort of iPad thing in the middle. It's a fantastic, fantastic place to be. Yeah, my only problem with this really is, I like a supercar to look, you know, a bit crazy, a bit mad, like a Zonda. This, if you ask me, is a bit sort of mm, play. You say, you say Zonda, but which Zonda do you mean? Well, the Pagani Zonda, as opposed to, say, the Kia Zonda, or the Ford Zonda. <laughs> ah, no, you see, because over the years... Now, the new Batman film is released next week. Obviously, it's got some actors and stuff in it, but the thing we're interested in is the new Batmobile. And look, we've got it here in the studio. There it is. Look at that. I have to say, that's bigger than the Batmobile I had when I was a kid. Yes, it probably is. It that's weighs true. two and a half tonnes, yeah. it's 15 feet long, and it's actually the only car we've ever had in the studio that's wider than Jeremy's GT. I know, that's it's incredible in feet. itself. <laughs> that's amazing. And the important thing to bear in mind is that in that clip we saw, there's no computer-generated trickery going on. It's all for real. So they've actually given this thing a real 5.7-litre V8 engine. Now, here's the thing. Normally, when a car is built one-off for a film, they start off with something like a big old American barge, and then they cover it with cardboard and bits of papier-mâché until it looks right. But this was built from scratch as a Batmobile. This is actually a Batmobile. And here's another interesting thing. When they showed the concept to all the American companies that normally come up with these special cars, they all said, can't be done, too difficult, all that back-to-front axle stuff. And the result of that is made in England. Yeah, absolutely. Now, of course, it's got to have lots of clever gizmos. So, it needs to have guns. Here they are. Then, further down the car, when Batman stamps on the anchors, the enormous air brakes are deployed. Look at that. And finally, check this out for a party piece. You see? <laughs> With a car like this, Val Kilmer could be in the movie and you'd still want to see it. We thought you might want to take a quick look at this. It's the Jaguar CX-75, and it's kind of Jaguar's 75th birthday present to itself. And, well, I mean, it is a bit of a looker. And it's full of little references to great Jaguar cars of the past. This fin refers back to the massive fin on top of the old D-type. And then the back has been styled to have something of the old Jaguar XJ-13, one off of the 1960s about it. But here's the thing, in a modern world, there's no denying, I think that is the thing of beauty to behold. But that beauty is much more than skin deep. Absolutely. This is, in fact, an electric car. There is an electric motor powering each wheel. But 
you don't have to plug it into the mains to charge it up. Because if you look in the back, you see a pair of gas turbines, jet engines, if you like. Now, they can either generate electricity to recharge the batteries and increase the range, or they can feed power directly to the motors in the wheels, in which case this car develops 780 brake horsepower. And the other remarkable thing it has is a big spanner. Hello. <laughs> yes, inside it's all very modern, very cool. This mood lighting shows the driver which seat to sit in, I imagine. And then if you hit the buttons, you can scroll through different modes. And if you put it in track, it'll dim all the lights so the driver can focus on the driving. And it's got these great door handles that are ejector seat levers. And then when you want to get comfortable to really get down to the driving, you don't move your seat about. You move the instrument binnacle, the steering wheel and the pedal box back towards you or forwards like this to suit the driver. Obviously, in my case, it's going to be coming this way quite a lot. <laughs> now, Jaguar say this would do 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds and 205 miles per hour. And the great thing is that the gas turbines will run on pretty much any flammable liquid. So you could fuel it with petrol or with diesel or, if you wanted to save yourself quite a bit of money, single malt scotch whiskey. <laughs> Anyway, pray silence now, please, for the most breathtaking car we've ever had here in our studio. It is the new Lamborghini Reventon. Reventon. No, it's Reventon. No, no, Reventon. It's Reventon. Is... I can prove it. Look, it's got in there. It's got a V. Reventon. No, I know it's spelt with a V, but it's pronounced with a B. Why? I don't know. They've told us it's B. Reventon. Anyway, it has a 6.5 litre V12. V12. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it can do. Whatever. Please stop. <laughs> stop, that's very annoying. It can do 212 very miles annoying. Leave it! <laughs> it is an awe-inspiring car. It is. Oh, no, honestly, I'm with you. It's styled to look uh, like an F-22 Raptor, you know, the new stealth fighter. And it really does. It's, this is what Lamborghini should be doing, making cars where you just go, wow! It's just fantastic. And it's not just on the outside either. It's clever inside too. We've got some pictures here. The dashboard is a thin liquid film transistor like you get in aircraft. That's on car setting. If we switch it now to aircraft setting, look at that. I want that yeah. in my life. Yeah, it's just covered in things you want around here. The rear lights, LEDs in little arrow shapes, these enormous fans down here behind these grills. And around here, the wheels have got carbon fibre fins on them that act as a giant fan to suck in cold air to cool the brakes. And just, just a fuel filler cap. Look at that. Couple of problems. One, they're only making 20, only one's coming to Britain. The other thing is £800,000. Yeah, that is quite a lot. Mm. But with this, you would get a lot of badge. Badge? <laughs> No, 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 no. I think I got away with that. So, uh, now, if uh, you've got small children watching, might I make a suggestion? Please send them to bed, because what we've got coming up now is, well, it's, it's pornography, to be honest. Yeah, R-rated stuff. We've had nine songs, nine and a half weeks, and now this. Yep, this is the Alfa Romeo Brera, and we think it may very well be the best-looking car that money can buy today. What do you yep. think? Yes? Yes, good. You think so? I Anyone think got so. any better looking cars that you can think? Aston Martin Vanquish. You've come here with that hair to comment <laughs> on the style. <laughs> right. Uh, is anybody else? Yeah, you've got a theory? Ford Mondeo. The best looking car yes, it in is. the world it is. ever yes. is a Ford Mondeo ST. <laughs> Your aspirations are pathetic. Man, have you seen the lights? I mean, look at the way all this it's just gorgeous from every angle. I mean, everything about it. Have you seen the door handles? Look, it's all special bits. I only have to imagine this in black Ooh. with tan leather, oh, and I'm nursing a semi. Yeah, <laughs> I know, you, could, you could set up one of those premium phone lines. Could you tell me about your prayer? Is it black? It's tan leather? Oh, it's too much. It is. Have you seen inside this thing? Look, no, it's got sat nav and like telephone and buttons. I mean, they'll all break, obviously. But God, that's it amazing. It's gorgeous. You cannot be a true petrol head until you've owned an Alpha, until you've experienced that roller coaster of pain and disappointment and agony for the brief moment when everything works and you're on a nice road. They yeah. are, they are. The, has anyone here got an Alpha? Yes, you see, human beings are way over there at the back. They had to walk the last yeah. 10 miles, but the first time, was brilliant. Absolutely, they are gorgeous cars. You've never had one, though, have you? No, but I think I might be about to. Do you want to get some details on it? Go on. 
price yeah. starting at around 25,000. You're joking. No. For something that, that looks like that? I know. Uh -oh. 25 to about 35 probably for the, uh, depending on what engine you have. Engines, you've got 2.2 litre, 3.2 V6. You can have a diesel if you're the sort of person who thinks the Mona Lisa should have a moustache. Yeah, that down, um, is down a bit. But. It is down a bit, but nevertheless. It's just magnificent. What I'd love to meet is someone who looks at this and goes, no, I think I'll have a BMW actually. Because I think now we have a new definition of insanity. Someone who could buy one of these and then buy something else. Yeah. Anyway, this week Renault have sent us something they think we'd like to see. And here it is. It's a mobile telephone. Now your mobile telephone may come with something like a camera. This one comes with a car. And here it is. It's the Megane Coupe Concept. And the amazing thing about it is, it's all operated using this telephone. I have, for example, just opened the 1970s doors with it. I can also switch on the headlights like that. And on the inside, I can even turn on the funky disco lighting. You can do pretty much everything on this car using the telephone. You can even start the engine. The only problem is they're never going to put it into production. I have better news from France because this is the Peugeot 308RCZ and they are going to put this into production. And well, look at it, it's fabulous. It's got the same 1.6 litre turbocharged engine you get in a 207 GTI and a Mini Cooper S, but it's been tweaked to give 218 horsepower. Up here, this double bubble carbon fibre roof also produces downforce, so this car doesn't have to have an ugly spoiler on the boot lid. Yeah, N not all brilliant though. Peugeot say it's got four seats, but I mean, well, come on, even I'd struggle to get in there. <laughs> You're probably better folding them flat, which you can, and if you do that, Peugeot say there's room in the boot for a mountain bike. Now, we've heard that this car will be coming to Britain in 2010 at prices starting from £20,000. How about that? And I think, actually, Hammond, that on that basis, the Scirocco that we had in a couple of weeks ago, possibly a bit dull. Yeah, it also means I want to ask Peugeot a question. If you could make this car all along, why did you waste our time with all that other dreary rubbish, you pillocks? <laughs> but now they've decided to have a go at a car. And here it is. It's called the Crossbow. Now, the body is made up of plastic panels just like it is on the bike. You can see all the innards, like you can on the bike, and you have to wear a crash helmet to drive it, like you do on the bike. It really is a stripped-out track car. All you get is a seat, a steering wheel, and a two-litre turbocharged Audi engine that's enough to take it to 60 miles an hour in under four seconds. Apparently, KTM say it is quite a handful, and as a result, they won't sell it to drivers under 24 years old. Just one thing. Lewis Hamilton, he's 23. <laughs> Mazda. Over the years, they built up a fearsome reputation for making very sensible small cars and the worst television commercials in all of human history. This, however, is their latest creation. Plainly, they wanted to give it a name which conjured up an image of, of, uh, of aggression and anger, but unfortunately the job of naming it was given to someone from Birmingham, so it's ended up being called the Fudoy. Uh, <laughs> the chassis is from an American Le Mans racer, which is the same as a European Le Mans racer, only fatter <laughs> body that was clearly designed by someone with a batman fixation uh i think it looks absolutely brilliant actually although if you take it to a film premiere it'll probably take a swing at its sister <laughs> allegedly that is of course um the engine wankle 1.9 litre 460 brake horsepower 2.6 miles to the gallon and annoyingly broken. The best car to replace the Ford GT40 was the Ford GT40. I mean, this is the new car and come on, you're not fooling anyone. It's okay, four inches higher and 18 inches longer than the original GT40, but it is a GT40. Basically, they put the plans for the old car on a photocopy at 110% and said enlarge. But it is a lot cleverer than the old one. It's loaded with technology. Take a look at this. Do so you want to see the engine? Right, there it goes. That's actually going to take a moment or two. In the meantime, you've pulled into a petrol forecourt. Obviously, everybody's going to be looking at you. But if they're not, this should tip it. Have a go. Here we go. Let's get to the fuel. <laughs> Look at that. That's just to put your petrol in. 
That's unbelievable. We can possibly squeeze in and have a look at the engine now. It's a 5.4 litre V8, supercharged. That's about 500 brake horsepower. That should be enough. Bear in mind, this is a very, very light car indeed. But take a look inside. You've got to have a look. This is just... It's just breathtaking. Look at the switches. Each one looks hand-carved from a lump of aluminium. And the gate around the base of the gear lever. Look at that. None of that nasty rubber full of bits of biscuits and old chocolate. Of course, this isn't real. It's a pretend one. I don't know what it'll be like when they make it. And oh yes, they are going to make it. Ford have announced this week they will be putting this into production. But it's going to be expensive. It's going to be on sale in America from 2004 at about $150,000 a piece. And you're going to be very, very lucky, even if you've got the money to get hold of one. They're going to be incredibly exclusive. Basically, you're going to have to know somebody at Ford. I know. Talking about James Bond, new film, Die Another Day. And great news because after 15 years of unforgivable disloyalty, Bond is back in an Aston. And this is it, Bond's Aston Martin Vanquish. Now, obviously, a Bond car, it's got to do clever stuff, and it does. We've got the obligatory ejector seat in there, and then down here at the front, the grill drops down, and out come two machine guns, and then, oh, thank you, and then four missiles. Thank you. Four oh, missiles. Well, for once, Bond is completely outgunned by the baddie. This is his car, a Jaguar XKR. And it doesn't have four missiles in the front. It has 18 missiles that come out there. It also has spikes in the tyres. And we can peel down the bottom of the door here to reveal two heat-seeking missiles. It also has central locking. You can lock both doors and the boot with a simple press on a button on the key fob. <laughs> then behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat, it has a bulletproof screen which rises up like so. A Gatling gun, obviously. Listen to that. That's a great Bond noise, isn't it? I love things that do that. But the pièce de résistance is here, in the boot. Open it up. Motor bombs in the back. Oh, love it. You absolutely had to, didn't you? But that's just firepower. Bond has sophistication and brains on his side. So, yeah, the baddie fires his mortar bombs. From here emerge two shotguns, specially designed with a rather pitiful noise, to shoot them out of the sky. But interestingly, it was those along with the missiles at the front that gave them a rather interesting problem when they built this car, because so much space was taken up that underneath here, you can see... Oh, there well, go. It's gone they away. They had to get rid of the original V12 Aston Martin engine. It was too long, so they replaced it with this Mustang V8. It's that much shorter. There's more room. And the really good news about that, of course, is because the Aston engine's gone, so's the stupid gearbox. Look, Bond gets a proper automatic, which is a good job, because, of course, if you had to do a three-point turn with the stupid flappy paddles, the world would blow up by the time you'd finished. Interestingly, despite the rather depressing difference in firepower between the two cars, under the surface they're really very similar. They've both got that same Mustang V8 and they've both been converted to four-wheel drive, which they had to be because in the film they have to be driven on ice. The thing that really excites all of us about this is that in this world of computer generation, they could have just got some boffin at a computer to type away and computer animate the things, but they didn't. They built them for real. Here they are, actual, real yeah. Bond cars in the metal. So Audi have taken their swing at the Mercedes and they've sort of missed. Jaguar are next to step into the ring in this heavyweight contest with this, their new XJ. Well, not this exact one, obviously. On the ones they sell to real people, they'll put some paint on it, I presume. It is a handsome car and it's long. It's as long as the S-Class. But that's not going to be enough alone to tempt the world's plutocrats away from their beloved three-pointed star. It needs to be special. And it still is inside. You still get that cosseting feeling with this high centre console and quite sombre dark wood and swathes of leather. It's still a lot like riding in a mobile gentleman's club. Don't be deceived though, because behind that wooden leather veneer, this is a very, very high-tech car. Think of it as being like a tweed spacesuit. No, no, I'll explain, I promise. You see, like the Audi, okay, it's made from aluminium, but it's built in a completely different way. This, okay, this is the Audi. Now, it's got an aluminium skeleton onto which all the aluminium body panels are bolted. So you've got the weight of the skeleton and then the weight of the panels. Now, the Jaguar is more like a lobster, OK? A lobster. A lobster. It's got an exoskeleton. What you see here, this is the structure. That's it. A lobster. Exactly. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? No. Do you get it? No. Yeah. 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 
He gets it. You know exactly what I mean. That means it's light. It means you haven't got doubling up. It means that you're going to go, you have more speed, you'll have more economy, you'll be kinder to the environment. A lobster. 